the Bahama Bank. Bahama Bank. For your birthday. For my birthday, we're going to Nassau. We're going to yeah. go stay tomorrow. The, is Captain Blue's birthday. We have had a really good sale. We left uh, Blue Water Marina in uh, Bimini this morning, and we've had really good winds. Really good sea state. Very comfortable. We're moving uh, probably averaging six, six and a half. Somewhere. This is the Bahama Bank, where this water is ten feet deep. Fifteen shallow. It's going to go as long as we can today. If this, if, if the wind dies down, if it's supposed to, and the sea state gets flat, we may anchor out here. Uh, on the, 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 the cake in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Ready to go. Thank you. The magic is done. Is that? The magic is done. <laughs> Just until midnight tonight, because your birthday is at midnight tonight. So I can't have it today? Midnight. Midnight cake. <laughs> Happy birthday, Captain Bruce. Uh -huh. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Your wish. It's my wish. This is the way you were expecting to spend your birthday. <laughs> no, that's okay. It is what it is, right? Bahamas, Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bahamas, Bahamas. We are in Nassau. We're in Nassau. And uh, today is... Um, it's my birthday. It's birthday and that, what an exciting day, huh? Yes. So, what happened today during your birthday? <laughs> what a birthday. <laughs> so we, we got here at the marina in Nassau and uh, they tied us up on the tea head on the outside and uh, a young couple in a catamaran was backing out and they hit our, our sugar scoop on our port side and then later on that was enough another catamaran pulled in front and hit us on scrubbed it, bumped us on the bow. What a day. What a day. So we've been rigging up our, our, uh, our, our boat here because we're moving a lot because Nassau does not have a no wait zone through the middle of where all the marinas are. I don't get it. Uh, and we're facing out to the channel. But anyway, that's my birthday. So how can we make your birthday better? Get out of here. We uh -huh. can have a happy birthday. Thank you, baby. Oh, it's a conch shell. Excellent. <laughs> Good gift. Thank you. And we have to say thank you, Ed and Cindy, because they were the one who helped me to order for you and uh, hide them and pass to me. So, thank you, Cindy and Ed. Thank you, Cindy and Ed. <laughs> yeah, a lot to learn. Hello, Ed. Hello, Cindy. Port Montague is located on the eastern shore of New Providence Island and was built in 1741 to help the British defend against Spanish invaders. A military engineer by the name of Peter Henry Bruce, who not only had a cool last name, but he also oversaw the construction of the fort. It had 23 cannons and over 95 barrels of gunpowder on the day of completion. Thursday, January 27, we depart from Nassau and we are ready to go to the next port. We are going to Anchor, find a quiet place. Nassau is nice, just while you're busy. Bye bye Nassau. The Exuma chain has 365 islands and keys and is located 35 miles southeast of Nassau. Now to put that number in perspective, the Bahamas as a whole has a total of 700 islands and keys. So yes, 
There's a lot to see in the Exumas. But I gotta tell you, this area is home to some of the most pristine waters you will ever lay your eyes on. The waters are so beautiful that you will never have enough words to describe them. So our first stop in the Exumas is Norman's Key. Now there's a big northwest blow heading our way, which the pond anchorage within the key will give us protection against. There's just one catch. Due to some very shallow waters, getting into that pond can be a big challenge for newcomers like us. There, yes? Yes. You want that to go there. And that is just sand. There's sand on the bottom. Yeah, but rocks in each side of the... Yeah, as long as we don't hit the rocks on each side, we're good. But this, this is deep. This entrance here is deep. I hope we can stay here for a couple days. We are going to have a heavy water. I see the marker. Wow, it's really shallow. What is the depth? Four foot. Five foot. Coming up. Ten foot. You made it. You made it again. Good job. Be careful in the poor side. No, we're good right here. Oh, your toe? A panel. No, mm. my ankle. Mm. You can't have toes and ankles on a boat. Careful with your head. Yeah, you can't have a head on a boat either. <laughs> so we are going to replace all glory. He served us well. Service signs, uh, we left uh, Houston. We have the new old, the new glory. New glory. This is old glory. <laughs> That's new glory. It's supposed to fold it up. It's coming through you. Stay there. So here we are. Norman's K. Norman's Key. And look at this house. Rock and dirt. And there's a lot of construction going on right now. So this is where this is where we just walked. We walked down this dirt road. And this is where we docked the team. Absolutely incredible. We are on the way to do some snorkeling to find the Carlos Leather airplane. There's a lot of um, holes. Oopa, baby. I don't know what makes the holes. There's, I think we're in deep enough water now. There are different myths as to how this airplane ended up on the bottom near Norman's Key. One is that the plane was overloaded with drugs, which caused it to crash. However, a pilot at Norman's Key at the time, and apparently knew of the event, said that a pilot they called British Andy, who was known to have a drinking problem, was practicing some touch-and-go landings on the airstrip. During one of these touch-and-goes, he apparently created some damage to one of the propellers and landing gear as he made contact with the runway. Now he was able to regain just enough altitude to perform a major turn to clear the airstrip and then crash landed the plane in the water adjacent to the airstrip. Now in seeing the position of the plane in reference to that airstrip, I tend to believe the story of the touch and goes. But regardless, we found this wreck site to be an interesting place to snorkel. Look at this uh, beautiful and 
quite a natural swimming pool. We are over there. You can see the massive of Nami. Here we are on Shroud Key, and there's like crazy mangroves back in here. It's just stunning. Yeah, you can walk. Oh, all you can say is it's stunning. Uh, the tide is going out. Just the current in this little stream is incredible. We're going to walk around and see the, if we can, can find the, the other ocean. side of you can the, hear the ocean. But I don't know how to get it. We got to be careful. Some of this might be quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, my love. I'll be the one to rescue. You. Be careful. I'm, I'm serious about quicksand. Yeah, I know that. Look at this thing. Mr. Bruce is over there. I don't know. Some fighting with the boat. What he's doing? But look at over there. Wow. The view was beautiful, just the way back is kind of painful because low tide. So we get kind of trapped. I, I feel like Humphrey Bogart and the African Queen. So now we are using one horse power. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit deeper. I can see it's deeper. I'm knee deep here. Let's give it a shot. How they sound? It's a little bit more. It's getting water. It beats the hell out of water. <laughs> okay, let's go. We are looking for a camp that in theory on the 70s, I guess is the US probably, 80s. 80s, they put in some camp to spy Carlos letters, activities. We are trying to find a ruins. Oh, this is a trail. That uh, they said that this probably signs 1700s or 700s or the 1700s. 1700s. And uh, we have this whole side of the island by ourselves. There's nobody here. Nobody. Man, I should have brought the machete. I haven't encountered a spider yet. Do they not live in these parts? Don't, don't know. After some minutes of hiking, we finally found the Russell ruins. The Russell family were British loyalists who were given a grant to settle on Hawksbill Key by the Crown in 1785. And apparently the Russell descendants occupied the area until 1900. On top of the hill, we found the ruins of a small one-room house made from sandstone and coral. We later found even more ruins scattered all around the area. Why did they decide to move to this isolated island? And how did they survive this kind of lifestyle? Well, we don't know, but this is a very uniquely remote place to build a house and raise a family. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to the other side and see, not me. The trail is opening up. 
And what? I don't think you have to worry about spiders. No. I haven't seen a single spider. No, but no this spiders, plant, no snakes. This plant is the one they it's got have stickers. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, huh? the overlook. The overlook. Wow. Still can't see Namid. Namid's Namid's over on the other side of this this uh, point. But you can see that 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 boat out there is the. Uh, uh, Liberty Clipper. It's uh, I think it's a uh, charter boat. That... Oh boy, our dinghy! <laughs> it's sitting in it's sand. It's sitting in sand. We have to probably push pull, the dinghy. I pulled it out, but wow, so goes, fast! Goes, goes Look at all the conch set shells. So there's probably eight conch here. I see a dish. A what? A piece of dish. Oh, a dish. A plate. Somebody was eating conch. In 170s. And then uh, this was their uh, sister, their, their water collection. Conch shell. That was carried here. Look at all the conch shells. Uh, there is another kind of construction Look over there. This. Oh, there's another. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably where they cook, I guess. Well, there is another here. There's a big hole. And they cooked conch. A lot of conch. <laughs> just threw the shells over there. Interesting. You see this hole? Oh, but wow. this is natural, baby. That's a cave. I ain't going in there. No. There might be things in there you don't want to find out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sure looks spidery to me. That is a cave. Careful. Don't get too, don't get too exploratory there. <laughs> if you want to get exploratory, walk over there. I got the backpack on. Wow, look at this. What about this, huh? So beautiful experience. And this is the sad part. In a beautiful place, in a beautiful water. And what you find in the beach? Trash. I don't say the people are coming and putting the trash here. I said no. people around the world just put in trash yeah. and you never know when or where the trash is going to end. Well, it's end here in this beautiful paradise. Made me sad. So we have to think twice before using some kind of products, some throwaway products, because our products is coming in places as beautiful as this. We got it! <laughs> Success! Success! Ladies and gentlemen, the favorite, favorite flip-flops of my husband. I need to do something to heat change the flip-flops but I tried everything and nothing is working so he's still wearing this I believe once what about baby my... careful baby he's moving sweetie you are too close I want to see. Ha! Think this is long enough? Baby, I guess she's already mad. Why do you want to move it? She's mad? Yeah, why do you want to do that? Because I want to see. No, no, no. Let, me, let her alone. Why? Because. Why? Why you are going to disturb her? Why you are going to do that? So we can see what it is. No, baby, no more. Bruce Ritchie. Come on, Bruce. Come on. Look at this. We are the only one in this beach. Hello.
Hello. Hi, how are you? never know what you will see when you jump into the water. In front of you may appear new colors, or a new life, or even new sounds. Then suddenly you may be fortunate enough to be in the right place and at the right time to see something incredible, like this group of very large eagle rays swimming gracefully in unison. This was below us in about 20 feet of water near water at Wells. And even though it appears our video is in slow motion, this is the actual speed in which these magnificent creatures glide through the water. continue to drift snorkel, we then came close to some sharks. Okay, it may be time to jump back in the dinghy. Another trail looking for the Bubu Hill where we are going to put this stick with our names as a commemoration of a visit here. Okay, that could be cool to have more time to walk around. The only thing I don't like it is almost five, it's gonna get dark. You walk around and this is this is the funny cross. Yeah, that is the This is the bridge. Bridge. Nice sweetie. Yeah, this is tricky. Well, which one's right? <laughs> you go over there, baby. It's like ice cream. <laughs> close. Good morning. It's um, 6.45 a.m. and look at the bottom. We're in uh, four foot two. In the, um, the wind went to nothing and so uh, yeah we looked down and our, we were on top of the anchor and it, it's you can see of course I dove on it when we got here. It's buried. It's buried really well but that you can see the chain coming up from the back. <laughs> Incredible. The feeling is like the water doesn't exist. It's just a blue floor. And you can go out and walk. Day two in this key, or key. Yesterday we explored other places. So we decide to try again today. You are not scared about us, huh? Kills us. Let's see. 
Okay, this is the path for Boo Boo Hill. Hill Trail. When we go over there, look. Wow. Beautiful. And the story said, the spirits dancing and sing around this place. Wow, look at all the sun. So this is our first, like a mark of memory for our presence here. As is natural, coming from the other key. Yes, shroud key. Ready. So we if somebody up a... come here and see yes. our little stick, you know we were here. There you go.